Hi, it's Phil. Before I get started on this episode, I wanted to ask a small favor. But before I do, thank you, I mean so much, for clicking play on this episode. Like they say on the airlines, I know you have a lot of choices when it comes to podcasts, so thank you so much for choosing mine. Okay, now on to the favor. What I'm really hoping to accomplish with this podcast is connect a lot of like-minded people, like me and you. We're nerdy Disney fans, and this is the kind of stuff that we really enjoy. So one way you can help me do that is by subscribing to, rating, and reviewing the podcast. For iTunes listeners, it's super easy. Just head over to eartotheirtravel.com slash iTunes and follow those directions. For Android and other listeners, I didn't forget about you. Head over to eartotheirtravel.com slash podcasts with an S, and you could subscribe to the show there. The more people that subscribe to, rate, and review the show, the more listeners I'll get and the bigger the community gets. Thank you so much in advance for that. And now, on with the show. From the Ear to Their Travel Studio, this is the Ear to Their Disney Podcast. The Ear to Their Podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to Their, it's time to start the fun. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to Their Disney podcast, Walt Disney World Word of the Week. I am your host, Phil Gramlick, and each and every week I will bring you a different Walt Disney World word and then give you tips, tricks, hints, background information, history, all kinds of stuff about that word. Just think of it as you were a Disney fix in 15 minutes or less. And like I say every week, sometimes I go longer, sometimes I go just a little bit less. Well, I rarely go less. Let's be for real. (laughs) <laughs> but before the word of the week starts, it's time for the What About Bob segment of the show. That's where I have Disney legend and Imagineer Bob Gurr come on the show each week and give an answer to one of your questions. So if you don't know who Bob Gurr is, well, Bob created such things in Disneyland and Walt Disney World as the monorails, the Matterhorn, the Doom Buggy from the Haunted Mansion, all of the Omnimovers, the submarines, the Autopia. The Tomorrowland Speedway, you name it. If it's on wheels, Bob created it. And if you want to get a question into Bob, you can call the voice line number. That's 267-551-1971. Or you can always email that question to me at phil at eartotheirtravel.com. And just like every other week, this segment of the show is brought to you by the Waltland Bus Tour. Each month, Bob narrates and hosts a bus tour of Glendale, Los Angeles, and Burbank, California. He goes to all the important stops and spots in the history of the Disney company, and especially in the history of its founder, Walt Disney. To get tickets for the tour, just stop by www.waltland.com. All right, every time we started off with Bob's theme song, so here is Bob's theme song. It's what about Bob? Bob the legend, creator of the Matterhorn, the monorails in the haunted mansion. What about Bob the Disney legend? All right, Bob, this one is from Paul in South Carolina, and he wants to know how you came up with the design for the Matterhorn, because you designed not only the track and the vehicles, but you also had to kind of build it around the Skyway that was already there. Oh, it was quite simple. Walt um, brought me some photographs of a, uh, a typical bobsled, um, a, a type of car. And, you know, back in the 50s, some of the bobsled uh, racing cars were um, not too sophisticated. They, you know, they looked like a little shoe with a couple of, a couple of people could sit in. Some of them had, uh, you know, four-man teams. It was very obvious to, well, okay, we're going to snuggle four people into the vehicle. And uh, since uh, we're not going to have ice in Disneyland, certainly not in the summer, well, we just simply use wheels on the bottom instead of uh, sled runners. Uh, so there's really nothing to it. The same body package is, is what you're going to use. Uh, but the people will sit upright in it where when the guys that are racing them, they're all huddled over as a very tight bunch uh, maneuvering the vehicle because it's on skates. Um, and instead of having a uh, ice track where uh, you'd slither around in this track right and left, we'll have a uh, um, 
a roller coaster track. And the uh, minute we got going on it, the big question was, we don't have much time to design and build this track. So Aero Development said, well, you know, the cheapest, fastest material is, is plain old pipe. Uh, we'll invent a pipe bender, and we can bend that pipe and, and do that faster. And partway through the job, we accidentally invented the pipe roller coaster track, not because we wanted to invent it. We just accidentally invented it because that was the cheapest material to build it the fastest to open it on the day when Walt wanted to open it. So that whole attraction came together very, very fast because um, Walt's idea was we had a model of the Matterhorn, the shape of the mountain. Fred Jerger, our model builder, had built it, and Walt said, that's what I like. And then he came to me and he says, okay, Fred's got the model. Uh, you go look at it. I want you to put a roller coaster in there and wind it up in there somehow. And, oh, by the way, uh, put two tracks in there. Just uh, fit them in there. Uh, that's quite a request. And in those days, before you had a computer, I would do everything with pencil and paper and a hand compass on flat pieces of paper on a drafting board. And in a matter of a few weeks, I managed to um, snake two of those tracks through the steel structure and stay mostly inside the shape of the mountain of the model that Walt wanted. Yeah, that sounds crazy, but everything to do with the design fell into place very, very quickly, and the car was one of the easiest parts. Uh, it's always quite obvious from the get-go when Fred Jerger built that model, he had a hole in it. If you ever, yeah, look at your pictures you can see on the internet. The Matterhorn model had a hole in it. So we had a, a, a dirt mountain where we just piled up some dirt. We call it Snow Mountain, and we had a tower on there for the Skyway at that location, and so I had the dimensions of that. So as I was designing the two tracks, I had to um, have the um, the track that with a lift that goes up over the top of the sky ride. Then the, then the two tracks had to make a quick turn and dive down underneath the bottom of the uh, uh, buckets, uh, Skyway buckets. So I had to not only put two tracks inside of this tapered mountain, the mountain had a big hole in it and there were spaces you couldn't use. So when people say, well, that's funny putting the, mad, putting the Skyway through the Matterhorn. No, we built the Matterhorn around the Skyway. Wow. Thank you once again to Bob for answering yet another question on the show. And thank you to Paul for your question. That's a cool one. The Matterhorn has always fascinated me. And I love that it's kind of one of a kind out there in Disneyland. So that was a neat question to hear an answer on. All right. So let's move on to the word of the week. So this week's Ear to Their podcast, Walt Disney World Word of the Week, is brought to you by the letter Y. Y for Yale. And no, I am not talking about the school. I am actually talking about Yale Gracie, who was a Disney Imagineer and became a Disney legend. Now, I've spoken about Yale Gracie uh, quite a bit on this show already. I've talked to Rolly Crump about him. That was way back on episode 11. Of course, Rolly is another legendary Disney Imagineer, and he worked on the Haunted Mansion with Yale Gracie back in its earlier days. I also know that Bob Gurr has mentioned Yale Gracie a couple times on the show as well, but I never did a word of the week for Yale Gracie, and I wanted to make sure I did one because his contributions were so great and so unique within the Disney company and within Imagineering. So I just thought it was very important to do an episode dedicated to Yale Gracie. And maybe you'll learn a thing or two because there's some crazy stories that kind of go with the Yale Gracie story. So Yale Gracie was born on September 3rd, 1910 in Shanghai, China. He was the son of an American consul who lived there, and he attended an all-English boarding school. Among his other art training as he got older, he attended the Art Institute of Chicago, the Art Center School of Design in Los Angeles, and the Schwinar Art Institute. Now that name, that should ring a bell, because a lot of the Disney artists came from the Schwinar Institute. In 1939, Yale Gracie joined the Disney Studios as a layout artist working on Pinocchio. He also worked on Sleeping Beauty on Fantasia, and he kept working on Disney animated films where he did most of the layouts and the backgrounds 
on the Donald Duck shorts that were directed by Jack Hanna. No, not Jack Hanna, the guy who has the animals. Okay. In the mid-1950s, Gracie found a home at WED, which was, of course, the precursor to Imagineering. On one Saturday afternoon, Walt Disney was conducting one of his regularly unscheduled visits to all of his animators and WED offices when he stopped by Yale Gracie's office and he saw a mock-up that Yale had made simulating falling snow. So Walt was so impressed by this mock-up that he moved Yale into a two-room office, like two big rooms, where he could come up with new gadgets and new ideas for Disneyland. Now, the cool thing here is Yale really had no training in doing this stuff. He was a magician and he would just come up with things. He didn't even have a specific job title or a specific thing that he was supposed to be doing every day. Walt just kind of gave him unprecedented freedom to create things that someday may go into the park. In 1959, he was teamed up with Rolly Crump, and they were tasked with coming up with some cool illusions and ideas for the Haunted Mansion. Now, one of the really cool things that Gracie put into the Haunted Mansion was the Pepper's Ghost effect. If you're not quite familiar with what Pepper's Ghost is, imagine the ballroom scene of the Haunted Mansion, where the ghosts kind of appear and disappear and then reappear. Now, that's actually a pretty simple effect, and that's been around since the 1800s. It was perfected by magician Henry Pepper in 1862, and being a magician himself, Yale kind of thought it would work really well in the Haunted Mansion, and to this day, it really, really does. I'm not going to explain how it's done. If you want the magic ruined for yourself, just look up Pepper's Ghost. You can check it out on YouTube. You can Google it. They'll show you how to do the illusion there. But Rolly Crump and Yale Gracie came up with some really scary, really state-of-the-art scares for the Haunted Mansion. There's a great story that Rolly Crump told me on that episode 11 of the podcast where he and Yale rigged up some scary stuff to go off when the janitors came into their office to clean it. So imagine that it's the middle of the night, they go to turn on the light, and all these creepy, scary effects happen. Actually, listen to the episode if you want to know, because Rolly tells that story way better than I ever could. Obviously. I mean, he was there. He designed it. But they came up with some really scary stuff for the Haunted Mansion. A lot of it that they weren't able to use because they knew that there would be tons of kids going through that attraction. About the Haunted Mansion, Yao Gracie said, and I quote, People enjoy being frightened, but we couldn't make the attraction too scary because of the droves of children that would be coming. We decided to add the element of comedy. It's like adding a wink of an eye to the end of a ghost story. Someday I would like to design a real scare house. Some of the illusions that weren't used in a haunted mansion would send chills through anyone I know. Yale also came up with the idea of the singing busts. So you know when you're going through the graveyard scene of the haunted mansion and the singing busts are singing Grim Grinning Ghosts, that was something he came up with on Rolly Crump's lunch break. Seriously, while Rolly Crump was gone for lunch, he projected the image of a silent film onto a Beethoven sculpture, and that's where he came up with that effect. So Yale was really good at designing kind of creepy stuff. And one day, Rolly Crump wanted to know why and how and where that came from. So one day while they were working together, Rolly goes over to Yale and he says, have you ever had anything happen in your life that you thought was supernatural? And apparently, without even skipping a beat, Yale says, oh yeah. I had a ghost read to me when I was 10 years old. So, of course, Rolly asked Yale to kind of elaborate on that story and tell exactly what happened. And I found this one on the website DisneyHistoryInstitute.com. And I want to read you a quote from Rolly Crump, who was retelling the story that Yale Gracie told him. So, Rolly said, He and his mother went back to visit relatives on the East Coast. They lived in this big old house, and Yale was there for the summer. During those months, Yale's mother let him spend time with his cousins. They played inside and outdoors. Each night, the children would sleep together in a large bedroom. In this room, there was, at least in Yale's version, an old lady who lived in a closet. A figure who came out from time to time. She would come out and read the kids little stories. And then she'd go back into the closet. But the children all understood that they should never talk about the lady to adults lest she disappear for good. At the end of the summer, Yale's mother asked what he liked best about their visit. 
Without hesitation, Yao responded, the little lady that lives in a closet that reads to us every night. The room grew quiet. Yao's mother, surprised, exclaimed, what? The other children all whined, no, no, Yao, she'll never come back. Evidently, the mother was concerned about it, Rowley said, and so she went to the local history society and actually found out who the people were that built the original house. She found a picture of that woman who lived there and went and showed it to the kids. That photo, of course, was her. The woman in a closet, or at least this was the impression that Yale got at age 10. Now, Rowley was positive that Yale wasn't the kind of guy to make a story like this up. Another quote from Rowley said, Yale would never make anything up. He was about as straight as they came. As far as I'm concerned, it's true. It can't be any truer than that. So, and this is me talking again. Talk about having an inspiration for a haunted mansion. Yale Gracie was being read bedtime stories by a ghost at 10 years old. Now, believe in ghosts or not, that's a heck of a story. And I'd like to think it's true. I hope you enjoyed that story from Rolly Crump. And I hope, well, whatever you get out of it, to me, it just adds a little bit to the lore of the Haunted Mansion. Now, you've probably seen the name Gracie around the Haunted Mansion itself. As a matter of fact, you've probably read the tombstone, Master Gracie laid to rest, no mourning please at his request. That tombstone was written by Ex Atencio, of course, yet another legendary Disney Imagineer, and a lot of guests and a lot of Disney fans believe that that means he was the master of the house or the owner or the man in charge of the Haunted Mansion. According to Exitensio, that wasn't the case. The tombstones were just jokes. They're just kind of puns that use the names of those Imagineers who created the Haunted Mansion or who had a lot to do with the Haunted Mansion. In Exitensio's eyes, Master Gracie was a child. In fact, the word master at the turn of the century where the Haunted Mansion is actually set, was used for males who were too young to be Mr. But that misconception that Master Gracie was the head of the Haunted Mansion has been out there for years and years. As a matter of fact, in that oh so... I was going to say oh so bad it's good, but it's not good. In the If you want to say film adaptation of the attraction, you can, but I don't think it's a good... It's not a good adaptation, let's be for real. Anyway, in the Haunted Mansion movie starring Eddie Murphy, they even say that Master Gracie was the master of the home. And in fact, he wasn't. That wasn't a part of the story. It's not a part of the unofficial or the quote-unquote official Haunted Mansion backstory, which there kind of confusingly really isn't one. The Haunted Mansion is, as I've mentioned before many times on this show, It's kind of a mishmash and a combination of a ton of different storylines. So after 36 years of working with the Disney company, Yale Gracie retired in October of 1975. After his retirement, he continued to consult on many Walt Disney World projects until his death. Now, I told you there were a couple of kind of weird things about Yale Gracie and kind of crazy stories. His death might be the craziest one of all. On September 5th, 1983, Yale, who was 73 years old at the time, and his wife Beverly were in a cabana at the Bel Air Bay Club on the beach in Pacific Palisades, California. Around 2.30 a.m., someone broke into that cabana. That individual shot both Yale and his wife while they slept. Yale Gracie died at the scene and his wife was injured. Now, the craziest thing was the motivation for the crime was never known. The individual who committed the crime fled on the beach and was never caught, and there was never a suspect. Fellow Disney legend and Imagineer Mark Davis gave an interview to Theme Park Adventures magazine where he said, Somebody shot Yale to death and wounded his wife in this cabana. Here was this guy who created all of these magic things. If you wanted fireflies, this was the guy who would figure out how to do them. He was the guy who created the fire effects for pirates and the magic effects for the Haunted Mansion. All of that was Yale Gracie. (laughs) 
And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There Disney Podcast, Walt Disney World Word of the Week. Thank you so much for listening. As always, I really appreciate it. I hope you learned a little bit about the life of Yale Gracie on this episode. I certainly did not know about a couple of those stories until, well, not really all that long ago, to be honest. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And thank you so, so much again for hanging out with me, for listening to the show. I really, really appreciate it. And just remember, there will be a new episode of the Ear to Their podcast, Walt Disney World Word of the Week. Next week on Wednesday, look for the Z episode. And there will be a new episode of the regular Ear to Their Disney podcast each and every Monday morning. So until next time, thank you again so much for listening. Have a phenomenal week. Bye-bye.